Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Father of the Effortless English System, I train you, I teach you. I coach you. I help you. You speak English fluently. You speak English confidently. You speak English powerfully. And you speak English effortlessly when you join my VIP program. But not just join. You commit and you don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there and commit. Don't quit. Today, we're talking about a Zen, a Japanese Zen, Zen Buddhist saying. Seven times down, eight times up. Seven times down, eight times up. And connected to, this is connected to, uh, the challenge, in fact. Oops, one second. Ah! Okay, we're live on YouTube as usual. Hello, everybody joining. I'm going to jump into the topic. It might be a little bit shorter show today because I got to go take care of babies. And it's a little late today. Okay, so seven times down, eight times up. Here's the deal. We're almost to the end of our challenge. We have one week, essentially one week, a little bit more, a couple of extra days. But we have essentially one more week. And I was hoping to finish really strong in November. But guess what? It didn't happen. The opposite happened. Instead... I got sick, my wife got sick, my two babies got sick, even my mom who was visiting got sick. <laughs> and during this whole time, so first I was sick, I couldn't do anything, just laying around in bed, then I fasted, uh, but then I recovered, but the problem is then my wife was sick, so I had to take care of our babies while she recovered, and then our babies started getting sick, so now, you know, they're kind of fussing and crying a lot, and take care of them. One had to go to the doctor today. So during all of this, I've basically done none, no Japanese, no listening at all. So instead of doing extra, my time actually went down, which sucks. But oh well. This connects to the saying. There's a saying, it's a, it's a Zen Buddhist saying, specifically Japanese. Uh, Japanese Zen is Japanese. And it's, uh, you, you hear it translated different ways, but it, the basic translation is uh, seven times down, eight times up. Seven times down, eight times up. I'll put it on the screen here if you're watching on the screen. If you're watching on video, look, I've got it here on a, uh, yeah, I've got it here. Fall down, or another way to say it is fall down seven times, get up eight fall down seven times, get up eight. Let's talk about that a little bit. It's kind of an attitude more than anything. It's more, it's, it's an attitude about what? About failure, about failing in some way. So I, I failed my goal for November, which was to do a lot of extra hours of Japanese. Instead, quite the opposite, I actually did the smallest number of hours of Japanese this month. I've had over a week of no Japanese at all. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of a failure, right? It is a failure. The failure of reaching that goal. On the other hand, the overall challenge has been quite good for me. I'm, I'm happy with my overall results, even though this last month is going to be quite weak for me. And October was a little bit, was a little weak also. So I started very strong and kind of got weaker each month. <laughs> But still, much better than I was doing before. Now, I know a lot of you, I've seen it in the comments. I've seen it in the comments here on the show. I've seen it in the comments on our challenge site where people get, or get, get kind of feeling bad, get up, getting upset, feeling bad because they also have done fewer hours than they wanted to. Or they perhaps they do, you know, two hours a day. And they see in the challenge, some people are doing eight hours a day. Some people are doing 12 hours a day. 
and they're like, oh, I'm only doing two, and they feel kind of bad. And I know in other areas of English, in other areas of life, that you know, maybe you have a goal, you want to, some of you are focused on tests, and you try to take a test, and you don't get the right result. Or some of you, you plan to do a lot of English, and then something happens. You get busy in your work. You have a problem at your home. Something happens, and you can't do it. You don't do it. And a lot of people get really, really upset about all of this. Ah, oh, this sucks. And they get so upset by failure. Some people get so upset by failure that they, they actually avoid taking risks. They avoid committing. They avoid doing things just to avoid that bad feeling of failure because the mindset it's kind of an unconscious mindset but the, the unconscious mindset is something like if I don't do it then I can't fail and if I don't fail I won't feel those bad feelings which is very unfortunate because then you also have no chance to succeed so what I like about this Zen saying I, I, I think the Zen saying is it certainly is Zen Buddhist saying but it, it also has a connection to what, what's called Budo in uh in japanese like you know the 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 warrior spirit and I, for me I, I i think of jujitsu when i or judo judo or jujitsu when i uh read this saying and i listen to this saying because like for example in jujitsu you fall down all the time right some your throat you fall down or your opponent the other guy throws you down but it's the same result. You get thrown onto the ground. You fall onto the ground again and again and again, every time. Judo, exactly the same. It, constantly, every single day you practice, you get put onto the ground. In jiu-jitsu, yeah, you get put onto your back a lot, right? Where there's a maybe a bigger, stronger, faster, better guy, better fighter, and... They put you on your back, and you're on, you're laying on your back, and they're on top of you. And it happens again and again. It happens every single time that you go to jujitsu practice or judo practice. But what's what's kind of interesting about this is that judo fighters, jujitsu fighters, they don't get upset about this at all because it's part of judo. It's part of jujitsu. Falling down, getting thrown down. Uh, Getting put onto your back is just natural. <laughs> it's it's all part of it. And so the great thing is that judo and jujitsu fighters learn to become very, very relaxed about falling. They, they practice falling, first of all. They practice how to fall well. They don't try to avoid it. They don't say, oh, no, I will not fall. Because, of course, they know they will fall. That eventually they're going to fall. No matter how good you are, no matter how big and strong you are, Eventually, you're going to fall down. Someone's going to throw you down. It's going to happen. So there's no point avoiding it, right? Absolutely pointless to try to pretend, oh, I'll somehow, not me, I won't fail. I won't fall down. No, you're going to fall. Everyone does. Everyone. So instead, what do they do? They practice how to fall well. They ha practice how to fall without getting hurt. So that you, it's called a break fall break fall breaks your fall so you fall in a way that you still fall but you protect yourself as you fall so you don't smash your head on the ground and get a you know a serious brain injury you, know, you don't stick your hand out and then break your arm right so they learn judo and jiu-jitsu fighters how to fall well and you can see the metaphor right there's a metaphor here about life in general because in life in general you're going to fail you are going to fail. You will fail. You will make a goal and you'll fail to do it. You will try to, a project. You'll have a dream and you'll fail to do it. You'll uh, fall in love with a girl or a boy and they will reject you. They, don't, they won't want you. You will try to invest money and you'll lose money. You'll try to start a business and the business will fail. You can't avoid it. This is life, okay? So trying to avoid it is, is a idiotic, foolish uh, mindset because it's impossible to avoid all failure and disappointment. So what? If we learn from jujitsu and judo and from the Zen saying, the smart thing to do is learn how to fail well. Right? So learn how to fail in a way that doesn't destroy you. Right? So this is what good investors do. 
people who are professional investors, they know how to, they risk their money. They do lose money sometimes, but they do it in a way, they invest in a way so they don't lose all their money, right? It's called risk hedging, right? They're protecting the risk. There are many different ways to do this. And professional investors who are good, they always do this. So they know how, they know they will fail. They know there's, it's impossible, impossible to have 100% success in investing. You're never, no investor does it. Not the best, not the billionaires and billionaires, the super billionaires. They all lose money sometimes, but they protect their investments. They know how to fail well, right? And it's the same if, if you start a business. You don't risk all of your savings and your whole life and all of your emotion and if you fail, then your whole life's over and you kill yourself. That's stupid, right? So learning how to fall. The other thing I like about in jiu-jitsu and judo and in Zen is this idea that not only will you fail, you will fail. You're going to fail many, many, many times, right? Seven times down, eight times up is the saying. In judo, I don't know. If you, you start at white belt in judo and you keep going to black belt, how many times do you get thrown down? How many times have you fallen? Hundreds? Thousands, maybe? Probably thousands. Same for jujitsu, right? How many times are you put on your back again and again? How many times do you have to tap, right? In jujitsu, we tap when uh, somebody has you and you, you have to basically, you quit. You say, I failed, I, I lose, and you have to tap. You're going to tap constant all the time, <laughs> especially when you're at the beginning levels, but even black belts tap. So it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. But, and what's cool about jiu-jitsu, judo, zen, is the mindset that it's no big deal. You don't get, emo you don't get upset about it. You, don't, you just accept it and you stand up again. Right? That's what the saying means. Seven times down, eight times up. You're standing up, you go down. What do you do? You just stand up. Then you get, fall down again. What do you do? You stand up again. You fall down seven times. You stand up again. Now you're up for the eighth time. If you fall, what do you do? You stand up again. It's that simple. You don't cry. You don't say, I'm a failure. Oh my God. Ah. Right? You don't get afraid. You just stand up and keep going. And probably you'll fall again. In jiu-jitsu, what happens? Somebody throws you in the ground. What do you do? You keep fighting. You, you try to fall. You break your fall. So you fall well. You don't get hurt. And you keep fighting. Most of, much of jiu-jitsu is fighting from your back. Jiu-jitsu fighters especially learn how to fight on their back and they can be very dangerous from their back. If, you know, some people who don't know anything, they never watch jiu-jitsu. If you watch two guys fighting in jiu-jitsu, uh, it's very natural for people. They think, oh, the guy on the bottom, the guy on the, his back, he must be losing. Clearly, he's losing. He's in a bad position. He's on his back. The other guy's on top of him. Looks very strong. And so, people who don't know jujitsu think, oh, always the guy on top is winning. But it's not true. Jujitsu fighters can watch. Sometimes the guy on the bottom's losing. But if he's good, <laughs> the guy on the bottom actually might be winning. The guy in the bottom, he can choke the guy on the top. He can lock his arm. There's many, many things they will do. And they can win from being on their back. And the really good guys, can. there's a guy named um, Hodger Gracie, was famous for this. You know, it's just, he was very scary from his back. <laughs> very frightening. The guy was so good. So you think, you're watching him and you think, oh, Hodger Gracie, he's on his back. He's losing. No, probably not. He's probably winning. Um, but even sometimes people, everybody loses. And so the attitude in judo, the attitude in jiu-jitsu is you tap, pop, pop, you tap, right? I quit, you win. And then what do you do? You just stand up and you start again. That's it. That's all you do. You don't cry. You lose. So what? Stand up, do it again. Right? Maybe the next time the other guy loses, what do you do? So what? You stand up, you go again. Then you go and you, you fight somebody else. Same thing. You lose. So what? Stand up. Go again. And this is the mentality. So losing, eh. You know, of course, in a real serious tournament, the very serious guys, they get kind of upset when they lose, but they still stand up and they fight again another day. And in practice, in the gym, 
it's just this attitude where you just get you're used to failing you're used to tapping you're used to falling and it becomes no big deal the all that negative emotion gets removed and you just have this kind of calm attitude about failure where oh well i failed again so what stand up what do you do after you fail you stand up and you keep fighting you keep you stand up and you keep trying so, you know, like for me, I'm not upset about this uh, Japanese thing. I got sick. Things happened. So what? What do I do? Am I going to quit Japanese? No. So what? You know, I'll, I'll just start listening again. That's all. You know, even if this whole month, my mom's visiting, my schedule's busy, my, my hours are going to be less. So what? Next month, I'll do more. Right? Got the winter coming. There's not much to do in the winter for me here, uh, especially with my little babies are at home. I have a lot of time at home, so, you know, so what? In uh, in December, I'll get more hours. In January, we'll have a new challenge with speaking. I'm excited about that. So you don't get upset about it. You just, you know, you stand up and you start fighting again. You stand up and you keep going. If you had a problem with your English, don't, don't get upset about it. So what? You failed a goal. You didn't reach a goal. You didn't get as many hours. You had a problem. You got busy. Your pronunciation sucks. So what? It doesn't matter. What are you going to do? You're not going to quit. What are you going to do? Stand up and keep going. Stand up and make another effort again. That's all. And maybe you fail again. So what? What will you do then? You'll stand up and you keep going. And you do this and you will eventually fail in the, in the big way. You will um, fail, 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 and then, ha- and then succeed. <laughs> right? And this is how people become black belts in jujitsu. They tap They tap, they fail, they fail, they fail three, four times a week, constantly failing, failing, losing, losing, losing as white belts. All you do is lose all the time, lose, 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 and then you come a blue belt and you still lose a lot (laughs) and you come a purple belt. Ah, Maybe you're winning some against the the lower guys, but you're still losing a lot and you become a brown belt. Now you're getting pretty good, but you still lose sometimes and the black belts still kick your butt. And then finally, you become a black belt through losing hundreds and thousands of times. You reach this great success, and yet, what did you do? You failed and 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 failed failed constantly every single day, leading you, but the failure made you better. You got better and better and better, and you learned more and more and more from all those failures because you didn't quit. You stood up, and you kept fighting, and you learned something, and you kept going. Right? And it's the same with your English. You fail, so what? Get up, keep going. You fail again, so what? Get up, keep going. And you'll fail, and you'll fail, and you'll fail, and you won't reach your goals, and I want to be perfect, and you won't be perfect, and your listening will suck, and you'll, ah, oh, this, this is terrible. You keep going. Your listening gets better. Oh, now my speaking still sucks. Uh, don't, get, don't cry about it. Stand up, keep going. Then your speaking gets better, more fluent. But now, oh, now my pronunciation still sucks. So what? You fail. You try to improve your pronunciation. Oh, it still sucks. What do you do? You keep going. Stand up. Keep fighting. And little by little, your pronunciation gets better. And then one day, eventually, you're speaking very fluently, very, very well. You're a great speaker. You're someone like Oscar, Max, Julia, etc. And you've failed, 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 but you've reached that big success. Business people do it all the time with entrepreneurs. As an entrepreneur, you try ideas, they fail. You try it as I've tried with Everest English, so many different little ideas that have failed. I try them, they failed. I try them, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. Oh, now one works, right? But it's the failures outnumber the successes, but it doesn't matter because overall, I don't need every idea to succeed. I only need a few. And overall, I have achieved success. For me, that means financial independence, financial freedom, and a wonderful group of people, effortless English members around the world. So there's no need to be afraid of failure. And there's no there's really no need to get upset about it. You know, we don't like it, of course. I don't think anyone likes failing. No one likes falling down, okay? Even in judo, no one likes getting thrown down. Uh, Jiu-jitsu guys don't like being the one thrown down. They want to control the fight all the time, but it doesn't matter. But we also know it's impossible. 
to avoid that it's so you just it happens and then but you don't get upset and you keep going and by just keeping that really it's called equanimity that balanced mind every single time you fail there's like no emotion about it really you just fail again and eh, so what you stand up and you keep going again. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mindset to have about failure. This will lead you to huge life successes, even though <laughs> you're having lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of failures along the way. Somehow, all those failures bring you closer to big success. It's interesting. Investors are the same way. You know, you invest people who invest in stocks or businesses or things. You know, they lose. I don't know. There's all these statistics, but basically, they they lose money usually. It, a professional investor, let's say they buy twenty stocks, they will usually lose money on more than ten. More than ten of the stocks, so ten or eleven of their stocks will lose money. Perhaps only five or six will make money. And yet, somehow, as they get better and better, the ones that make money can make a lot of money. And the losses might be smaller. And the risks, they know how to take care of the risks. So the failures are smaller. And so overall, they still somehow make a lot of money. They still overall make money, even though most of their picks are losers. So don't be afraid of it. Don't be, you know, fail faster, succeed sooner is one of those, um, you know, business sayings. I can't, I know, Tom Peters, I think, said it. Fail faster, succeed sooner. This was, this is what it means. Like in jujitsu, you don't want to, you could just, I guess, be, stay in a little ball in jujitsu practice and try to avoid, just, just don't get, don't lose, but you'll never win and you'll never learn anything if you do that. Um, so. It's a good life lesson. So you guys that are, if you have failures, if you had any disappointments during this challenge, just relax. Stand up and keep going. Life doesn't end at the end of our challenge next week. And on the other hand, you should also focus on what successes did you have. So I kind of, like I said, uh, this, this month has been a bit of a failure for me, unfortunately. But overall, uh, I've made nice improvements with my Japanese. Very nice improvements with my Japanese. Overall, I'll have about... I'll average about 100 hours a month because my first two months were really big. Uh, so I will end up with over 400 hours of Japanese in four months, which is very nice. And overall, I started Japanese one month before that. I'll, my total Japanese hours will reach about 500 hours. And that's also great. So don't forget to, even when you have these falls and you have these failures, don't Forget that you also have successes in there. There are also some things in there that are good. Maybe it's just you learn something. You learn something about yourself or you learn something in general. And those are successes too. All right. So let's get to the questions and comments. Yeah, okay. So we've got a lot of examples here. Namal says, I think the best example is J.K. Rowling. Rowling, author of Harry Potter, right? For failing, but in the end succeeding. Failing is like an exam. We should not give up. Don't quit. Commit. Exactly. Don't quit. Commit is another way to sum it up. Yes, that's right. And look at the final success she had. Quite large. Ahmad Saad says, here's a quote from Walt Disney, the guy who founded the company. Failure is delay, not defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead end. Failure is something we can avoid only by saying nothing, doing nothing, and being nothing. Indeed. Right. Emmanuel says, "Can you? is it possible to learn karate or jujitsu without attending a school? There are some videos on YouTube where you can practice at home with a friend. I think you can learn the what are called the basic combatives of jujitsu. You could probably learn those at home with a friend. If you both, there's something called Gracie Academy online. That's the website I would recommend if you want to learn at home. Great, I'm sorry, it's called Gracie University. I'm sorry. 
Gracie, G-R-A-C-I-E, university.com. GracieUniversity.com has some, a really great introductory course. But you do need a partner because, you know, jujitsu is something you do against another person. So you, you can't really do it totally alone. You can learn a little bit, you know, it, it, alone. It, it's still helpful to watch the videos alone uh, to review the techniques, you know, in between classes. But you, you absolutely need another human to go against. And you have to do sparring, you know, a big part of jiu-jitsu is sparring, which is live fighting. Um, so I think you could probably get that the basics. I don't think you'll go to black belt or anything uh, doing that because you need, I think you probably need a, a black belt to guide you to that level. But to get the basic stuff, you know, to help you in a basic self-defense way, for example, I think you could learn a lot of that at home with videos and a partner. Lisa, with a nice quote from a film she saw. Here's the message she said. I saw a film and the message in it were, fall on your face, fail spectacularly. Because you, when you fail, you learn. When you fail, you live. Indeed. Failure just means we have an idea of what we want, right? What is failure, really? It's just a result. It just means I want this result. I want this to happen. And then you try, you take actions, trying to make that happen, but it doesn't happen. That's what failure is, right? The re you don't get the result you want. Well, we're not gods, so we can't make everything happen exactly as we want all the time. It doesn't matter, we, but we can learn. Vladislav says, what can you say now in Japanese after 500 hours of listening? Well, I would say that after 500 hours, it's, it's more what I, it's more I understand. I have, uh, you know, well, according to Link, I have about 1,500 vocabulary words that I know. So it's, I've, you know, I focus, I haven't focused on speaking at all. So I don't know. I haven't tested my speaking yet. That'll be in January, right? We'll be doing the speaking challenge in January. So what can I say now? I certainly can manage basic things, but I haven't done any speaking practice at all, so probably not much. I think the more important question is, what can I understand? I certainly understand more. Um, am I fluent now after 500 hours? No, of course not. But um, I'm far more comfortable in the language. I understand the structure of it, very, very comfortable with it. I've got about 1,500, 1,500 words of vocab that I know. Uh, is that huge? No. Some people do thousands of hours in four months. Uh, or s some people do uh, learn thousands and thousands of words in that time. But uh, I'm still happy. I'm happy with it. Carol says, the real failure is when you give up. Most of the times you learn more when you fail than when you succeed. However, failures are easier to accept when you know you've done everything you could. Indeed. Indeed. I think the thing about failure, we don't like it, but it's just to, you know, like we say shrug our shoulders. It's just you put your shoulders up and like, eh, so what? It's no big deal. Don't get too upset about it. It's the emotional part of failing that's the problem. When, when we get upset, oh God, we get so emotional. Then we make bad decisions. Then we don't, we stop learning. We, we get fearful. Instead, you just stand up and keep going, right? Like the Zen saying, you just stand up and keep going. No big deal. So what? You fell down. Yeah, like Alessandro says, I think failure is the other side of success. It is. You have to think that it is normal. Right. That it, That's exactly. You have to think that it is normal. You just kind of think of it as normal, like the jiu-jitsu and judo fighters, right? Falling is normal. Losing is normal. It's just totally normal. It's completely accepted because every single practice, it happens. <laughs> many, many times, every practice. Every day you go to the gym, you're falling and failing. <laughs> so you just kind of what can you do you can't you're not going to cry about it you're not going to get upset about it because how can you get up too upset because you can't be emotional because it happens too much so you just you naturally learn just kind of like oh well 
Oh, well, I mean, you're not happy about it. You want to be better. But on the other hand, you can't be too upset about it either. So that was one of the key things I learned about in, in jiu-jitsu. Is I didn't like failing, but what can you do? When a black belt beats you, you just go, oh, well, he's better than I am. <laughs> when a, when a, even when another white belt beats you, you just say, well, what can I do? It happens sometimes. Even sometimes someone who's not as good as you, you know, sometimes they still can beat you. Yeah, like Hanani says, I had a tough experience that took me a long time to stand up. When I woke up, I realized it did, I did not deserve to be upset about any problem. Just step forward. Yep, just get up and go keep going. Ah, that's a nice comment about the last show. Uh, Eli Carlos Miranda dos Santos says, thank you for the last show. I listened this morning at 5 a.m. while riding my bike in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and contemplating all around me, the sun rising, the birds, and even the buildings. That's great. Yeah, nice, very nice. Okay, so like this is another example like of a goal. Kapil says, I'm preparing for the IELTS now from last year but still not succeed um, to appear for the test due to lack of proficiency. I'm failing during this period to appear for the test, but still trying to make myself perfect. Yeah, you'll never be perfect. This is the thing. It's the same thing. Another thing I like about martial arts. This is all martial arts, right? You know, boxers know this too. You're going to get hit. A boxer, you're going to be hit. It doesn't matter how good you are, okay? It doesn't matter if you're the best boxer in the whole world. You're going to get hit. The other guy will hit you sometimes. Sometimes they'll hit you hard. And it will hurt. <laughs> You're probably going to get knocked down sometimes. So, you know, martial artists, they, they, fighters, they just learned that like, oh, well. Uh, yeah, they know that there's imperfect is impossible. And that, that a part of being really good is dealing with those little failures. You know, with a boxer, what do you do when you get hit and knocked down? You get up and you keep fighting. Yeah, well, exactly. Bertalan, this is another good point. What Bertalan does is jiu-jitsu. When we're in training, we start rolling, which is sparring and jiu-jitsu, jiu -jitsu, fighting. Uh, we start from a bad position to improve our escape skills. That's exactly right. Jiu-jitsu, especially, uh, and Elio, uh, Gracie, one, uh, one of the founders, emphasized this. He really stressed this, that, and his grandkids, um, Henner and Hiron, really focus on this, too, that, it's actually best to uh, start from a failing position. What does that mean? It means when you start fighting, actually let the opponent, let them put you in a terrible position on your back, and you know, like their hands on your neck, and they're on top of you, right? It's already a failed position. Start there. Start there and learn how to deal with that. Uh, eventually, first you have to just learn to survive in that position. You're probably not, you may not be able to escape. But you can learn to survive where you don't get choked. Right? That takes some time. Uh, and then you learn to escape. Like I said, Bertalan said, there are escapes in jiu-jitsu from all of these terrible positions. There are ways to get out. Of course, the other guy probably knows the escape. So this is part of the game because he's going to try to stop you. And you have to try to, you know. But anyway, you put yourself in really bad positions. You actually do it on purpose. right? You choose to put yourself in bad positions. Why? To get tougher so that you're not afraid of those positions. So that if you're in a bad position, you know, I can still keep fighting. I can still keep fighting when I'm on my back and a guy is on top of me and he's choking me. I'm not gonna, you still don't quit. You're like, it's still not over. You know that I can still survive this. Even this terrible position, I can survive it. There are ways to survive, there are ways to escape. And then you, but you have to practice them. You have to practice them. If you avoid those positions in practice, you don't like it because you're it means you're failing well guess what and because usually you will fail when you're practicing you start in a bad position when you're new especially you're gonna fail they're probably gonna choke you <laughs> okay but um when you but if you keep practicing and practicing and practicing then you're you're not afraid of those positions anymore 
right? You're not afraid of those failed or those weak positions because you're not weak anymore. You know you can get out and your confidence goes up and this makes you overall a better fighter. So, and then Bertillon continues, that's why my escape skills improved a lot. We have to take more risks in training to get better. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm really missing jujitsu. <laughs> really missing it. How babies are doing better. They're getting better finally. Well, I had a bad night last night. One baby was sick. Okay, I'm just going to jump down to the bottom and move upwards here. Lydia says, what do you do if you have no motivation? This is another way of falling down, right? You're burned out. We call this burnout. Burnout. You, you, you lose all your motivation. I just take a break. I just take a break. Again, this is part of not like get. I used to get upset about it. Ah, my motivation. Ah, I must force myself. And, ah, ah. and instead, I just realize, just take a break. Just chill out, do nothing for maybe a few weeks. Just relax. And again, have in my mind, I'm going to stand up again. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm taking a break. And after a couple of weeks, feeling refreshed, start again. And that's what I'm doing now with Japanese. I just had a week. I did a little over a week of nothing. I'm not quitting, though. I keep going. Yeah, like Ahmad says, boxers practice to fall down and stand up lots of times to be champions. Right. All martial artists fail. All fighters fail. At some time. Usually often. <laughs> Elsie, that's nice. Elsie says... Uh, Great topic. I always brainwash myself with AJ's videos. Keep focusing on the positive side. Thank you, Elsie. Okay, sorry, just reading through. There's lots of comments. You guys are writing, typing fast. Yeah, and sometimes you just fail completely. Like Adil says, when I was young, I wanted to be a football player. Sometimes don't dreams don't go as we'd like. Right, so what do you, you don't quit life, right? Yeah, sometimes, especially when we're young, we have uh, dreams or goals that are not possible. Right, like uh, they just don't fit reality. They don't fit our strengths or we, we have a dream about something maybe because of the media, but the truth is we're really not capable. We're not able to do it, right? Like let's imagine if I was a kid and I thought I will be an NBA player. I'll play in the NBA, right? Professional basketball. Probably not. I'm not tall enough, not big enough, not fast enough. I'm just not physically good enough to do it. Um, so it doesn't matter. I could work and work and work. I I could probably become a decent, like not now, but when I was young, if I'd just been super crazy motivated and practiced every single day, I probably could have become a good, you know, amateur player, maybe in like in high school or something, been okay, decent. But after that, just physically, I wouldn't be good enough to be a pro. Just it's just genetics in this case. Uh so, so what? So it doesn't mean you quit life. It just means, oh, well, fall down. What do you do? You get up again. Choose a new goal. Sometimes that's part of falling too. Sometimes you fall and you do. You just realize this goal is kind of not a good goal. This goal doesn't fit me. I need to choose a better goal. Ron John says, do you have twin babies? Yes, twins. Little energetic twins. Uh, 
Okay, Emmanuel, I've got a last question. Are most business owners ahead of the curve? Because I would like to be like them, to change new ideas, way of thinking. But I'm not a creative person. Oh, you don't have to be so much. Emmanuel, being an entrepreneur is not so much about being creative. It's much more about being decisive. What I've noticed with people who struggle, who, who want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't do it, or they and they they just they can never succeed. Is it's the it's called indecisiveness. They're not decisive. They can't make strong decisions. They're they're par they're afraid of making mistakes. They're afraid of making a wrong choice, and so they they just don't make choices. I probably more important than creativity for an entrepreneur is that you're not you're kind of a little bit of fearlessness. You have some fearlessness where you're not afraid to decide because every day as a business owner you have to make a decision. There no, and it's very different than school. It's different than work. If you have a job, your boss tells you what to do. You know, work on this project, do this, reach this goal, well, and then you do it. You don't have to decide about your own goal, right? You don't have to decide on your own project, usually, in most jobs. Someone tells you to do it. So it's, uh, you know, you can be less, much less decisive. But as an entrepreneur, no one tells you anything at all. Zero. Nothing. Every single thing you must decide yourself. Right? What price should you charge? No one's going to tell you. No one will tell you. Should you choose a high, high price and kind of be more like a luxury brand? Should you choose a low, low price? Try to beat your competition with low prices? Should you choose like a medium level price? No one will tell you this. You, you, no one is ever going to tell you which one is, is the right choice. And you, you will never know for sure, right? There's no guarantee because different businesses do all of these strategies. Some charge high, some charge low, some charge in the middle. So you would just have to make that decision yourself. You have to just decide which one am I going to do without anyone else helping you. And a lot of people can't do it. A lot of people get too stressed out about this. And you have to make that, and it's, it's and that is every single day. It's not just price. You know, it's you know, like the color of your website. Should it be blue? Should it be green? Should it be yellow? No one will tell you. You'd have to decide. Um, what kind of product should you make? No one will tell you. Should you do a um, a service? No one will tell you. Again, every single day, decisions, 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 with no one helping you, <laughs> no one telling you what to do. I like that, but. I've, I realize that actually a lot of people don't like that and a lot of people get very stressed about that. So for people who want to be entrepreneurs, it's not necessary to be super creative, but you have to be decisive. You have to enjoy making decisions. I think that's the number one thing. Yeah, like Ahmad says, when you study the history of prophets, rishis, holy people that God sent to earth, you find the truth that struggling life they lived, that the, the struggling life they lived is a strong message to keep going whatever happens. Yes, indeed. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, on and on and on, all the rishis of Sanatana Dharma, they did not have easy lives. They struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled. But they didn't stop. Ah, I guess a good point. Abdullah, Abdullahi Osman. And this will be my last comment because I have to go take care of kids. Trying after failing is inside us naturally. We can see that especially with children. Yes, I've, I wanted to talk about this because I see this with my babies. When we grow, we're shaped by the system we've grown in. It limits us. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> this, is, this is natural. It's biological. So my baby girl is standing now already quite pretty fast. And she just, she constantly, right? She grabs things and she stands up and then she tries to walk a little bit. What happens? You know what happens. She falls all the time, constantly falling now. Why? When she was laying on her back, she didn't fall, no problem. But now she's trying to walk. 
Well, she's just standing. She can't walk yet, but she's standing up. But just even just doing this, trying to stand and then tries to hold and kind of move to the side. By doing that, what is she doing? She's falling, she's falling, she's falling, right? Uh, loses her balance and falls again, right? Falls under her butt, <laughs> constantly falling. What does she do? She cries eh, a little bit because she's a baby. But what does she do after that? She does it again. She doesn't stop. She just, she goes right back and does it immediately again, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter how hard she falls. Maybe I have to hold her. Oh, she cries. <sighs> she feels better. Put her on the ground. Does she then hide? Does she stop trying? No, she doesn't. She goes right back again to the wall and stands up again and falls again. All day, every day now, right? Same thing, our baby boy, he's not standing yet, but he's, he's, trying to crawl so what does he do he's on his back and now he can roll over so he rolls over to his stomach and he can lift his head and he can look around and but he can't crawl so what happens he wants to crawl he's, he's kind of like trying to move his arms and legs but he he doesn't know how to do it so he's not moving and he gets really frustrated he gets really upset <laughs> and he starts <laughs> right okay so he gets emotional about it but so we think, okay, ah, take a break, take a break. So we come over and we kind of, do well, gently, we'll put him on his back again, let him take a break. What does he do? Immediately, like two seconds later, he rolls to his stomach again, and he's trying again, <laughs> failing again. <laughs> but he just won't stop, just again and again and again and again. Every time they fall, they stand up again. This is how they learn to walk. This is how they learn to crawl, Right? I mean, every child, every baby falls and falls and falls and falls every day, every day, constantly. And when they start walking, they're still going to fall and fall and fall. And when they start running, fall and fall. And when I've seen the kids outside, when they're on their bicycles, what happens? I remember as a kid, I crashed my bike so many times, so many times. I crashed my bike and oh, my knee was hurt. My shoulder was hurt. Blood, you know, did I, what did I do? I, I, ah, and then I got on my bike and I kept going and doing it again. <laughs> Crazy, dangerous stuff. And I would just keep doing it, right? So you're right about that. Kids just do it naturally. They will cry a little bit just to get out that emotion a little. And then they go, they just stand up and they keep going and they keep going. And they're, and many times they're even, take even bigger risks. <laughs> so we can learn again from them. All right, guys, I have to go. Speaking of, I have to go take care of my kids now. So lots of love to you. By the way, we have uh, YouTube channel memberships are coming. Just a way to support the show if you like. You can get those. And it's a way, just a little way to support our podcast, our show. Okay, I will be back again tomorrow. Lots of love to you. Until then, bye for now. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> tomorrow I have an interview. I almost forgot. Tomorrow I'm interviewing Steve Kaufman from Link. So Japan Time at 11 a.m., about 13 hours from right now. So 13 hours from right now, I will interview Steve Kaufman from Link. Steve speaks 20 languages, or we'll say he knows 20 languages. So live interview, you can ask Steve questions, live questions tomorrow during my interview. So it's again, it's, it's Japan morning. It's Japan morning at 11 a.m. So Japan time, 11 a.m. tomorrow, live interview with Steve Kaufman of Link. Uh, he's a wonderful guy, great guy, and he uh, knows 20 languages. So if you have questions about learning lots of different languages, and not just English, but lots and lots and lots of different ones, we'll be talking about many stories. We'll be talking about all his ideas of language learning. All right, see you then. Lots of love and bye for now.